Hey everybody, thanks for checking out this movie review. So today I thought I would go ahead and have another um, one-off movie review. Uh, one-off aside means aside from my my current horror horror franchise review of Child's of the Child's Play movies. Um, I'm reviewing a movie that I recently watched that I've heard a lot of people talk about over the years, and that is the movie Sinister. So yeah, Sinister. Um, an undeniably scary movie, Roger Ebert of the Chicago Suns, Sun Times says. So, um, as usual, I'll just kind of go through the setup and the premise, and then I'll get into my, my thoughts and review, which will contain spoilers. Um, so, Sinister's a 2012 supernatural horror film directed and co-written by Scott Derrickson. And the film stars Ethan Hawke as Ellison Oswald, Juliet Rylance as Tracy Oswald, his wife, Fred Thompson as as the sheriff, James Ransone as deputy, and so so, <laughs> and Claire Foley as Ashley Oswald, his daughter. So, um, basically, um, this plot revolves around a true crime writer, Ellison Oswald, played by Ethan Hawke, who discovers whose discovery of Super Eight home movies depicting grisly murders found in the attic of his new house puts his family in danger. So that's basically the the, pres, uh, the premise of the film. So I'll just kind of go through how it starts out. True true crime writer Ellison Oswald moves into a home with his family, their son Trevor, Trevor and their daughter Ashley. Uh, Ellison moved into a home where a family was murdered and intends to use their case as the basis for his new book. Uh, he hopes his research reveals the fate of the Stevenson family's fifth member, Stephanie, who disappeared following the murders. Ellison finds a box in the attic that contains a projector and several reels of Super 8 millimeter footage, each labeled as home movies. The films are footage depicting the murder of different families in various ways, including a hanging, a drowning, a throat, sli a throat slitting, a hit and run with a lawnmower, and an arson. Uh, each, murder take, each murder takes place in a different year in a different location, actually. But each murder is performed by an unseen person holding the camera. Ellison notes the appearance of a mysterious symbol and a strange, ominous figure in the film. So that's a really good synopsis for the for the film. It definitely, when I read that, I was like, okay, let's let's get this movie started, you know, because it just sounds really intriguing. You know, anytime you have ominous or people that you can't see or who's holding the camera, those type of things. So here comes here comes my review with the spoilers. So if you haven't seen Sinister, it's been out about nine years, eight and a half, nine years. Go ahead and log off now and watch the movie before, unless you unless you don't care about spoilers. But um, yeah, so Sinister from 2012. Um, I thought this was a good film. I thought it was a good horror film overall. Um, I don't necessarily know that it's this, you know some people are saying it's the scariest movie. Of the you know even of this century I, I don't know about that I can think of three off the top of my head that I think are a little scarier but um, it works I'll say that um, starting with the pros I think Ethan Hawke is as you would expect is very solid playing the lead character Ellison Oswald in this movie um, he's pretty obsessed especially the first three fourths of the movie with um, you can tell he's kind of desperate to write a new book it's the, the doesn't really hasn't really been doing very well with his writing and so this gives him an opportunity to really uh really put a book out there to push his family over the top and really do well for him um the found footage parts of the movie the so like the movie reels the snuff films that he watches in the attic those that's the scariest part of the movie those are definitely the creepiest and scariest moments of this movie um because of the because of the sound because of the visuals just the look of it. I mean, it's that whole look of just uh, looking real and nothing, nothing filmed about it. It's that's definitely the scariest part of the movie. Um, this movie's interesting because there's horror in it, but then there's also a mystery that takes place. I mean, he's basically trying to solve this mystery of this where this missing girl is that I mentioned in the premise, Stephanie, from the previous family, and. So it, it kind of turns into this mystery with, and there's a, you know, they have their traditional horror movie jump scares here and there. And, um, but, um, the sound design's really good in this movie. And then those, in those snuff films, as I said, 
Um, the villain in the movie, who he ends up discovering the last third of the movie, Bergal, Bergol, Bergol, I think is his name, is definitely a creepy looking horror villain. Um, I thought he was really well done as far as how he looked and everything. Um, the overall scary, I thought, is innovative and the overall story, I should say, I thought was pretty innovative and effective, um, especially when there's so many horror movies that are kind of remakes or rehashes of things that have been done before. I thought this was kind of a different, different feeling movie, at least for me. Um, you know, the possessing of children to murder their own families is spoiler, as I've already said, but that's basically the, the gist of the movie is the reason he can't find Stephanie is because she's the one that was doing the murdering and holding the camera, basically, and Bergurl, Bergurl, Bergol is the ominous figure in the distance that you saw, that he was able to see on these snuff films. So, yeah, um, that that's definitely uh, definitely an interesting and creepy idea. Um, great directing by Derrickson with tight effective editing. I thought in this movie it was really good. Good makeup effects on the missing children when they're shown in the films or when they all come out together towards the end of the film. I thought they definitely did a good job there. I thought the crime mystery aspect of the movie in the middle had was pretty good tension. I mean, again, it has some some cheap jump scares as you would expect. Um, the last fifteen minutes or so of the film, though, is powerfully eerie. When you know, basically, his own daughter uh, Ashley Oswald <laughs> ends up playing the part of like the other kids did of murdering her own family, and they don't really hold back much. It isn't this isn't one of those endings where something comes through to save the day and, you know, at least a couple of them live. They, she really finishes the job as the other kids did. And um, it just, it really left you, um, it's not a happy ending. Not that most horror movies are, but you know what I mean? Sort of that, um, well, we defeated them this time and then they'll give you that little, that little glimmer of a jump scare or something at the end, which unfortunately they do here too. But um yeah, no, there is no happy ending here. It's no, no escape. Um, but yeah, the found footage and the imagery, imagery is what makes this film this like a, some good twists at the end that are effectively revealed. I thought. Um, as far as cons go, well, there is there is a bunch of characters that are inserted in this movie simply for for exposition dumps. And what I mean by that is there's characters that don't really serve a purpose. In fact, one of them. Um, basically just shows up on like a Zoom call just to basically give exposition to the audience in essence, even though he's actually talking to, to Ellison Oswald, Ethan Hawke's character. Um, they're basically just telling us stuff that they think we need to know backstory kind of stuff. So that was kind of, it doesn't really serve any other purpose other than that. So kind of some, just some hollow characters there. As I said, it has several of the cheap, lazy jump scares, especially with the sun's night terrors, which really didn't go anywhere. Those were simply for, for jump scares, um, typical supernatural cliche jump scares. Um, it kind of makes me wonder, too, when I was at, after this film was over, that why did why did he choose the daughter, Bagul, to, to be the one to kill his family? It almost would have made more sense to use the son, since they already kind of set things up with those night terrors that he was experiencing might have made more sense. That's not really a con. It's just kind of a question I had. Uh, the wife character was kind of cliche and over the top as well. Um, Juliet Rylands, who plays Tracy. Um, you know, I don't know. She was she was okay, but the, her character just really didn't have a lot. Um, kind of a slow, it's a kind of a slow burn horror movie again, which I'm okay with as long as there's a good payoff. And I thought this movie did have a pretty good payoff, especially the snuff films inserted in there. Um, but the final shot of the movie before fading to black is a typical studio suggested jump scare with Bagul jumping out from the side again, which I don't really think was necessary. I think they could have just shown, um, there's kind of a pan out shot where they show this, there's a new film now, a new snuff film, um, Super 8 or, um, the Super 8 millimeter film, um, it's basically their murder now, the one that we see at the end of this movie. Um, something about, I can't remember the name of it, something about art. Because her daughter, their daughter was kind of an artist painting on the walls and stuff. That would have been good enough for me. But no, they just had to have the, 
the kind of jump out from the side, you know, the, the good old studios. I think they should just stick to sending money to the directors. But that's just my opinion. Um, so, yeah, I, I enjoyed it. It definitely kept me enthralled throughout the movie. And it, it had a really good payoff with a good twist at the end, I thought. Um, the film overall was laid out pretty well. There were some, there were a few slow moments in the middle, but overall, this is an eight out of ten film for me. Um, I, th I thought it was an effective horror movie, um, especially within the last ten years. I put it in my top five from what I've seen. Um, once you see them, nothing can save you. That's the tagline for the movie. So, from the producer of Paranormal Activity and Insidious. So yeah, that's my review on on Sinister guys. Like I said, good good lead performance by Ethan Hawk, really good directing and really creepy visuals, particularly in the snuff films throughout the movie. And a good mystery with a good a good twist and payoff at the end. So eight out of ten. That's my review for Sinister. If you seen this movie, you like this review, go ahead and like this uh hit the like button and comment down below your thoughts on this movie. Subscribe to my channel to see future uh, movie reviews as well as my continuing um, horror fr franchise reviews and rankings. Thanks and have a great day. Bye.